like this shark's going into outer space, but it's not. It's about to become a fish out of water as it takes a thousand mile ride on an aeroplane. So buckle up your seatbelts and hold on tight. There's turbulence ahead. We're hitting a few bumps. up look at sharks doesn't have to be scary. In fact, you don't even have to get wet to do it. This is a Melbourne Aquarium in Australia and it's brand spanking new. They're just about to start a captive breeding program of grey nurse sharks. Even after receiving protection from the Australian government in 1984, the populations of these magnificent sharks continues to decline. And that's why this captive breeding program is so important. Melbourne needs a breeding female, and I'm going to help catch one. But before I show you how to fly an eight-foot shark 1,000 miles, let's go and have a look at a cousins in the wild. In 20 years of working with sharks, I've chased them in planes, I've followed them in boats, and I've even looked after them in the but I still get the most fun out of just diving with them in the wild. Unfortunately, that's getting harder to do in some places. Back in with the Scooby gear. We're about 300 miles north of Sydney at a place called Seal Rocks. This area used to have lots of grey nurse sharks. And they're one of the most popular animals for aquariums. So what are we waiting for? The grey nurse grows up to 11 feet long. And you can guess why it's called the sand tiger or ragged tooth. Those sharp teeth are visible even when the mouth is closed and they're constantly being replaced. These sharks can grow up to 30,000 teeth in a lifetime. They're designed for stabbing and grabbing small prey like squid, crabs and fish, and even sea urchins. This is a bottom-dwelling species, and you find them in many of the world's tropical and temperate waters, from the surf zone down to about 700 feet. The grey nurse is a slow-moving shark that will only attack humans if provoked. Unfortunately, a lot of these sharks have been caught over the years. In 1984, Australia moved to protect these sharks from fishing and spearfishing, and it was not a moment too soon. This is Seal Rocks today, but this shows what it was like 20 years ago. The rapid decline in numbers makes captive populations very important. Firstly, for the study of their behaviour, and secondly, as a reservoir for breeding stocks. But don't worry, Melbourne's breeding female won't be coming from this fragile population. Instead, she'll be coming from Malulubar's underwater world on Queensland's Sunshine Coast. Not that there's much sunshine at 8 o'clock at night, but the action is just beginning. My mate Craig Thorburn is Melbourne Aquarium's curator and he'll be supervising the transfer straight. Because certainly, I mean, if we don't put a pipe down on it, it'd be good, eh? At 11 sharks, Malulubar holds the world's largest captive population of grey nurses. And Big Mama here is one of the reasons. In eight years, she's given birth to three sets of twins. The fierce appearance makes these sharks a big hit with the public. But the grey nurse is also relatively easy to keep in captivity. This is Julie, the shark we'll be transporting. 
She was born here in Malulu Bar four years ago, so she'll be ready to breed in about a year or two. That makes her a very valuable specimen, and we can't afford to make any mistakes. He usually deserves it. He usually deserves it. He's just like a big fat Giles, you know? Well, we're just getting ready to go in to catch this grey nurse. So hopefully everything's going to go quite well. It's a bit of new experimental equipment being used here that we haven't used before. So it's going to be very interesting to see how well this shark responds to going into these new catching methods that we have. We've got a tube just here, which I've never used before. Instead of using a stretcher that we normally use, we're using this tube. And we're going to be taking some blood from the shark as well before it goes out to the transport tank. We're also going to try and burp it and take a little bit of air out of it as well so that it sits nicely in a transport tank without tipping upside down. So let's see what happens. Okay, see, let's see. The, the one with the green zinc is the one with the bent spine. Are you doing it, Dave? We've marked it. No, I'm just going to hang around here. Oh, okay. This is uh, what we're going to catch a shark in. We're going to put it over in one of these corners here, and as the shark comes around, we'll swim into this tube and be restrained by the tube. Then um, our friends from SeaWorld here are going to keep it nice and calm. As it calms down, we'll move it back into the lock here, and then it will get ready to go into the transport tank. We've done this twice before with uh, with two males. They're larger. This time we're uh, we're after targeting a smaller female. Now. Uh, we could get lucky and get it early, but uh, when the shark realises that we're trying to get it into this, uh, this small contraption here, uh, then it will probably uh, become more aware and uh, try and avoid it as much as possible. So it, it could take 15 minutes, it could take an, half an hour to three quarters of an hour. Who knows, maybe more. The capture is potentially the most stressful part of a procedure for Julie. So the success of a transfer depends on getting it right the first time. Everything depends on what happens next. If the capture is too stressful, the resulting increase in toxins in a system could kill her during a transport. With some careful herding, she goes straight in. I don't think Craig's ever seen an easier capture. Well, that's, that's a good catch. Yeah, very quick. Yeah. First go. There was no chasing her around the aquarium at all and she's settled really quickly. That means that the stress levels will be nice and low. Next, we want to tilt her up to make her belch. Many sharks rely on big, buoyant livers for flotation, and some, like Julie, even gulp air for extra buoyancy. So a good belch will help make her sink and lie flat in the transport tank. Going into the lock now, we might have to go upstairs. Yep. Now we've got to use a stretcher to transfer her into the transport tank. It takes plenty of hands to carry a 230 pound shark.
but the pole will just pull out. Okay. You want to go the other end? Just take the front up. Just, yeah, it's coming out now. Just bring it out. Bring it out. Just let it settle. Just keep the head down. What we've done is we've caught her, moved her into this transport tank, and she's just settling down here, and then we're going to take some blood and just make sure that she's not too buoyant. And then the transport tank gets filled up, off to the airport nice and quickly. We're rolling her straight over and upside down. Okay, and she'll just calm in a second. There are important lessons to be learned from the whole process. So we're taking blood samples to analyze for stress indicators later on. One last burp and she's lying nice and flat. From now on, the critical factor is water quality. So we've got to keep a close eye on the temperature and dissolved oxygen content. Okay, well we've just taken the air out, so now what we're going to do is clean this water up. We're going to do a water change, then the covers will go on, and we'll start to take her off to the airport. I might go and jump out on the suit. Yeah, if that's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. As we mentioned before, it'll probably take anywhere from half an hour to three quarters an hour, just like with all animals and children. You can't work with them on TV, and did it in about two minutes flat. So just to prove us wrong, perfect execution, worked very well. Just make sure it's not increasing or decreasing substantially. The water quality of Melbourne is five degrees colder than Malulu Bar. So to ease Julie's temperature down gently, we're adding a little ice to the tank. Time to pop the lid on. The tank has its own oxygen supply bubbling through the water, and Julie can pump it over her gills without having to move, so she'll be fine. That's it, that's torch. It's perfect, mate. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> We're monitoring the respiration rate of the shark. As the shark breathes, or if it's stressed, it breathes faster. As it starts to calm down, we'll notice the respiration rate will start to reduce. Okay. Okay, hit the road. Off we go to the airport. So far, everything's going according to plan. But with this precious cargo, we can't afford to take any risks. Halfway to the airport, we stop for one of a long night of regular checks on Julie's condition. She's doing really well. This is our plane, flight X177072 to Melbourne, departing at 1am. It's a regular freight flight, but tonight we're carrying a very special passenger in her own one and a half tonne private cabin.
the shark seems to have settled down into the transport container and we've just been loaded onto the cargo plane so we're having a long night now in the air down to Melbourne. So everything's looking well Craig? Yeah well, the water quality's looking fantastic, she's in good shape so just looking forward to getting her down swimming around in Melbourne for breakfast. Julie's waste products are building up in the water, including deadly ammonia, meaning we can't afford any delays. But so far, so good. You've heard of a flying doctor? Well, make way, Melbourne. Here comes the flying nurse. Well, here we are. We're in the air. On the way up. Take it off. Shark's doing really well. Whoa. <laughs> Trying to keep level here because we're going up quite steep. Okay, mate, we'll do a bit of water test here. And see what's going on. Sounds good. We've got a two-hour flight to Melbourne, but there's no slacking around in business class for us. We're monitoring Julie's progress constantly, and Craig's keeping detailed notes for future reference. It's not every night that you fly a shark, so the captain's come back to see how his passenger's going. Choice at present, you know, you don't see many flying sharks, you know. Hey, wait a minute, who's flying the plane? Turbulent and present, we're hitting a few bumps. I hope Julie doesn't get airsick. Nothing to worry about though. That's Melbourne Airport, right on schedule at 3.15 a.m. Welcome to Melbourne, mate. Yeah. Oxygen supply breaks down now, Julie would be in serious trouble. Next stop, Melbourne Aquarium. There it is, Julie's new home. It's been a long night, but the work's not over yet. This is Julie's first glimpse of her new address, and there are already plenty of people keen to meet her.
get her into that welcome into the different animal. Yeah. She's really starting to come to now. Yeah. So we'll take it down another five percent, I reckon. Yeah. Get her settled at 95, and then uh, get the stretcher lifted through. Yeah. Well, clear of bolts, guys. Well, clear of the bolts. Oh. Okay, good time. Let's get it in. Out of that tiny transport tank at last. This is only the holding pool, but you can see she's really keen to swim around and stretch her things. She seems alert and ready to go straight into the main display tank. This has been a textbook shark transfer. This is a moment of truth. Time for Julie to check out her new home. She's looking really good. She's sinking a bit, but that's to be expected. All she needs is a bit of a helping hand to get a gulp of air into her stomach for a bit of added flotation. Ah, that's better. She's looking great now, and doesn't seem at all uncomfortable in her new surroundings. should be pretty happy with this. All that remains now is to see how she gets on with her new boyfriend. Four months later, I'm back to check on Julie's progress and the news is good. Well, there's Julie there, mate. Um, four months later on, how's she going? Settling in really well, and We're wrapped with how she's going. Yeah. Uh, the male sharks have responded really well and, and that was something I wanted to talk to you about. We've seen yeah. some Pretty interesting behaviours for uh, you know for the aquarium down here. Craig's observed the males following Julie closely, which means she's beginning to reach sexual maturity. Well, why don't we come upstairs and we'll put some gear on, we'll go for a swim and give you a closer look at the rock. Yeah, she looks so good. Look, yep, great stuff. Craig now has the beginnings of the breeding population, meaning he'll have grey nurses to study for years to come. It's wonderful to know that captive animals like Julie here will help in the battle to preserve their wild cousins. But it's not only through research that they do that. Just by being on display, they're helping to ease the fears about sharks and to make us more sympathetic to their plight. And that's the first part of the battle. But my work is over and the rest is up to her.